In this video, we're continuing on with uh, chapter four, talking about roots of equations. So we saw um, in the previous video, an introduction to bracketing methods and with a focus on the bisection method. And here we're gonna focus on the false position method. So you may have noticed that the brute force approach of the bisection method is relatively inefficient. So the interval is divided in half without taking into account the value of the function at the interval limits. So for example, if the value of the function at one of the limits, so f of a, is much closer to zero than the value of the function at the other limit, or f of b, then it is likely that the root is closer to a than to b. Um, but the bisection method does not take advantage of this, um, of this fact. So if you recall example 4.2, where we considered uh, the function f of x is equal to x cubed plus x squared minus 10 on the interval from 1 to 2. Um, this was the result from the bisection method, where we were um, comparing with the actual error as well as the um, relative error. And so you can see um, that we did have an estimate close to the actual root after the, only the second iteration, but our next estimate was much worse because we did not um, take advantage of, of this idea that um, if we're, you know, close to one, if the root is close to one of the limits that we should um, choose a better estimate than right in the middle. So the false position method, which is also called regula falsi, joins the two points, um, so a f of a and b f of b with a straight line. So we have this function f of x and we've got our limits of the interval a and b and the values of the function f of a and f of b. We join these two points with a straight line and then the next uh, estimate for the root is determined by the intersection of this line with the x-axis. So uh, the point xi as shown here. So um, again we've got this, this idea here and then using similar triangles we can see that f of a divided by xi minus a is equal to f of b divided by xi minus b. So that means um, we can write our xi as uh, b minus f of b times b minus a over f of b minus f of a. An alternate form of the equation is uh, shown here, and you can um, use just algebra to, to get from one of these to the other, and they're both valid. Uh, the, the first one is um, a bit better, the second one is less desirable uh, just because it requires more function evaluations, which is computationally more intensive. But either one are, are valid approaches. So the procedure for the false position method is exactly the same as the bisection method, um, except in step two, where the um, calculation of the next estimate is different. So if you recall, step one, we evaluate f of a and f of b to ensure that f, a f of a times f of b is less than zero. Otherwise, we exit with an error. So essentially, this just uh, um, checks that we were bracketing uh, one root. Next, we calculate the value of the root in iteration i um, using our, our false position uh, algorithm. And then we check which of the following applies. So if f of xi is equal to zero, then the root has been found, so we exit. If f of xi times f of ai is less than zero, then um, the root is bracketed in the left side, the left interval. So we keep ai the same and update our b um, to be xi. Otherwise, if f of xi times f of bi is less than zero, then uh, the root is bracketed on the right side, and so we update our a to be xi, and we keep our b the same. Then we increase um, our counter, and if i reaches either the maximum number of iterations or if the convergence criterion is reached, then we stop the iterations. Otherwise, we return to step two with our new interval um, a at i plus 1 and b at i plus 1. So the relative approximate error can be determined in the same way as it was for the bisection method, where epsilon r is equal to x i plus 1 minus x i divided by x i plus 1. So our current estimate minus our previous estimate divided by our current estimate. 
and when the absolute value of this um, approximate relative error becomes less than a specified threshold epsilon s, then the iterations are stopped. So we can see an example. Um, basically, we are going to repeat example 4.1 using the false position method. So example 4.1 said that we wanted to determine the roots of this equation, sine of 5x plus cosine of 2x, with the following values for the initial interval, and using a stopping criteria of epsilon s is 0 0.0005, and we want to uh, determine the relative error epsilon r. So the intervals that we were going to consider um, are shown here, so we're looking for these three different roots. And this is the result using the false position method for the three different roots. Um, and again, with the uh, figure here showing the different estimates um, at the different iterations for each of the roots. So you can see how quickly the false position method converges uh, compared to the bisection method for this problem. Um, for the bisection method, we required eight or nine iterations to find each of the roots within the specified um, error, and here with this method, we require only two or three iterations uh, for each of the roots. So although the false position method is usually more efficient than the bisection method, as in the previous example, there are cases where it performs poorly. So for example, if we consider the function f of x is equal to x to the power 10 minus 1, um, which is shown graphically here, we can see that the root is at x is equal to 1, and we can use both the false position method as well as the bisection method um, to find this root with a starting interval of 0 and 1.3. So using the bisection method, after about nine or so iterations, um, we have a approximate relative error of 0 0.00127 and an actual error of 0 0.00087. Um, so we have reasonably good accuracy after about nine or so iterations. However, for the false position method, after the same number of iterations, um, our relative error is 0 0.069, but our actual error is 0 0.3131. Um, so you can see what's happening here with each iteration. Um, the new estimate is, is not changing very much, and it's not getting very close to um, the actual root, whereas for the bisection method, we did actually get close to the root um, reasonably quickly. So when you have a, a function that is quite flat like this, the false position method can have uh, slow convergence. And you can also see that the, the right-hand limit, um, b, was never updated, um, and this can contribute to the slow convergence. So in general, bracketing methods are very robust, um, so they always work if one root is successfully bracketed. So basically this means that the root that is bracketed is guaranteed to be found, However, there are cases when bracketing a root is difficult. So for example, um, in the case of multiple roots, bracketing does not work, so you should use a different method. So this is when um, the function just becomes tangential to the x-axis. Closely spaced roots are, are difficult, and the solution is to just reduce the bracketing interval to make sure that you're bracketing only one of the roots. Uh, if, the, if there's no real roots, then bracketing does not work. If the function is flat near the root, um, then you can use a large interval, uh, but the convergence will be slow. And if there's a discontinuity in the function um, resulting in no real root, then bracketing does not work. So um, what's important to, to learn from these examples is that it's always uh, a good idea to plot a function to get a good idea of its behavior. Um, so bracketing methods provide a, a good uh, brief introduction to methods to, for finding roots of functions. Um, and next we're going to talk about the alternative to bracketing methods, which, is, um, which are open methods.